In this audio, I will begin on page 1087 with assessment methods. Um, I do want to go over first. On page 1086, there's a figure 52-2, and it's the anatomy of the pancreas, the liver, and the gallbladder. If you'll notice on that lower right-hand side, it points to the sphincter of Odi or sphincter of Odi. The sphincter of Odi is actually a muscle, and that muscle surrounds the opening of the um, common bile duct and the pancreatic duct. Okay, and the sphincter of Odi is um, what we talked about in class pertaining to the question and the morphine causing spasms. Okay, um, <clears throat> so when we begin with patient history, we want to make sure that we're asking the patient about any gastrointestinal or GI disorders or abdominal surgeries. We want to make sure we're asking them about over the counter drugs, any herbal supplements they may be taking. We want to know if the patient is taking any aspirin, NSAIDs, laxatives, or enemas. So the reason why we want to know about those four drugs uh, specifically, GI bleeding and peptic ulcers can occur and with the, um, the NSAIDs and aspirin. And then with laxatives and enemas, we can see constipation and electrolyte imbalance. It is important to know that smoking is a major risk for gastrointestinal cancer, so you'll want to ask about smoking as well as chewing tobacco. Now, as far as the nutrition history, we want to know about which types of nutrients they're intaking. We want to know about any food allergies. Anorexia is the loss of appetite for food, and that can commonly occur with gastrointestinal problems. Now, we want to assess for dysphagia, which is difficulty swallowing, or dyspepsia, which is heartburn or indigestion. We want to assess the alcohol use as well as caffeine use. Ask about socioeconomic status. Why do you think socioeconomic status would be important? If you're unsure, try to look it up in your book. Um, some health problems have a familial tendency, so you want to ask about family history. Um, you want to be concerned with current health problems, so you want to know if there's any change in the bowel routine, if there's an unintentional weight gain or loss, and you also want to know about any pain. On page 1089 in the left-hand column, you'll see PQ. RST. It's a mnemonic that will help. Um, you probably saw it in your fundamentals course. P stands for precipitating or palliative. So what, what causes this pain to occur? What helps it? Well, what helps relieve this pain? The quality or quantity, we're wanting to know how the patient perceives this pain, okay? With region or radiation, we're wanting to know exactly the area that the pain lies. And we're wanting to know if it moves anywhere, okay? Um, is that indigestion moving up the arm, up, up the shoulder, as far as severity, that's where we use our pain scale of 0 to 10, with 0 being um, not hurting and 10 being the worst pain. And we also want to know about timing. Timing is important because we want to know when the pain comes on, how long the pain lasts. Is it, does it come in the morning? Does it come at night? Does it come both morning and night? Is it right after a meal? Is the pain before you eat? Okay, it's really important to know timing. Now, um, <clears throat> abdominal pain can be difficult to evaluate. So that's why we want to know if the patient's eating any certain foods that could be causing the pain. Okay, so if they're eating um, a spicy food and then they have abdominal pain, we would want to know that. We want to look at the skin for any discoloration, itching, jaundice, bruising, and tendency to bleed. 
Okay? As far as our physical assessment, before we palpate the abdomen or go poking around, we want to make sure that that patient has an empty bladder. We always want to begin in the right upper quadrant, and then we move to the left upper quadrant to compare those. Then we move to the left lower quadrant and to the right lower quadrant, okay? Now, you will inspect, auscultate, and perform light palpation as a nurse. Percussion and deep palpation are not performed by um, entry-level nursing. Um, typically, they're going to be performed by an advanced practice nurse or a doctor. Now, if you think the patient um, might have an infected appendix or appendicitis, or an aneurysm of the abdomen, you should not palpate the area. A brewery can be heard over that aorta when um, there's an aneurysm present, okay? Not always, but most of the time. Now, the abdomen can be described as round, flat, concave, or distended. In practice, you're going to see many different types of bellies, okay? If the patient's abdomen feels distended or tight to you, you always want to ask if that's normal for them, okay? And you want to state that in your patient notes that it is normal for them per the patient, okay? Now, bowel sounds should be normal active, um, should be about 5 to 30 sounds per minute. If you hear less than five sounds per minute, it's deemed as hypoactive. If you hear more than 30, that's deemed as hyperactive. Now, bowel sounds can be labeled as distant or gurgles as well. After any surgery, especially abdominal surgery, it's not uncommon for there to be decreased or absent bowel sounds. How long should you listen to each quadrant before saying that the patient has absent bowel sounds? Five minutes. Now, um, after surgery, we are oftentimes worried about how many bowel sounds we hear in each quadrant, but we also want to know if the patient is passing gas or had a bowel movement, because that lets me know that if they're able to pass gas, then the suturing is uh, working, that the surgery is working. Now, when I worked on the post-operative surgery floor, abdominal surgery stayed in the hospital until they had a bowel movement, and <clears throat> they're often NPO, which is nothing by mouth, until bowel sounds are present. Okay, now when palpating, um, you only press the abdomen about a half to one inch. You want to make sure that if the patient has identified any areas that are tender, that you palpate those last. Now, as a nurse, you're going to palpate to feel masses and to note any tenderness. You are not assessing organ size and shape as a regular entry level nurse, okay? Um, Assessing organ size and shape, that is for an advanced practice nurse or for a physician. Now, <clears throat> as far as diagnostic assessments, um, GI bleeding in older adults is the most common cause of anemia. The liver is where proteins are synthesized that aid in coagulation. Prothrombin time evaluates the levels of the clotting factors. Now, excessive vomiting and diarrhea can cause electrolyte imbalances. AST and ALT are enzymes that evaluate liver damage. Amylase and lipase are indicators of pancreatitis. When pancreatitis is extensive, often the levels um, cannot be about elevated because the cells can't manufacture the enzymes. Now, increased levels of ammonia are indicative of hepatocellular injury. Fecal occult blood tests, or FOBT, are used. It's important to know that patients should avoid raw fruits and vegetables and red meat. 
before they're perceived, before, um, if they know that they're suspected to uh, give a stool sample. These patients also want to avoid vitamin C rich foods, vitamin C rich juices, and any vitamin C tablets, as well as anticoagulants or NSAIDs for seven days. And I will begin in the next audio clip with imaging assessments.